well, formed uh, around 1997, a high school band with me and Gareth, bass player, Marcus, the guitarist, Carl and Damien, and um, once we found like the unit that it is today, we started getting pretty serious. When I first joined the band, we had a song that was sort of half finished. The first time I heard it, I just, like, that was for me, like, just, like, the turning point from just going to have a band practice and jam with some guys to actually wanting to, you know, to really get stuck into it. We were all listening to different sort of music. We don't stick to one genre and in five years' time, it could be nothing like we are at the moment. We're inspired a lot by each other. So the pre-production process teaches you a lot of things like you've got to be prepared to be in it when you're in a band to um, throw out your favourite bit in the song. Um, we, we all sacrifice things in the songs that we really love. It's quite a good good time for the band like um, well, I think we, we fully moulded at that time and really worked all our ideas and got to work with the producer. Paul producing it who's also a friend, um, he was like a rock in the studio like he was so solid and he really held us all up. I think we went into the studio like you know freaking out and um, had to take it quite serious like there wasn't much mucking around we like, went in there and, and nailed our tracks and tried to be pretty serious about the whole thing. You've been in pre-production for months and you think you've got everything tight and then you go in and you're like whoa you know, you've got to change a few things around just to fit with everything else. You think you go in and all record at once and just do this like lay down one track sort of thing but it's such a tiny sort of process. <laughs> I had the guitar sound that I wanted in my head, but um, the way I thought I played on stage, I thought that sound would come out in the studio. eight different snares and there was about five different brands of drums. We All borrowed together. though. All borrowed. Yeah. yeah. All borrowed. <laughs> yes. When you go into the bridge, do 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 ka ka. You 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 start speeding up. It can be pretty strenuous though, um, there was times where I was in the vocal booth and just losing it, it's so I couldn't, there was, I just wasn't getting the right vibe or something for, the, for a certain piece of the song. I lost it a few times then, sort of walked out of the vocal booth with bruised knuckles and shit, but you know, it all paid off in the end and that was well worth it. We got our album mastered by Howie Weinberg in New York and that was that was quite a big thing for us. Weinberg got mastered so many of our idols albums. Yeah. Everyone has influenced us. We mastered mm. every, everything. Tool, 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 We put our heart and souls into it and wanted to give it the best, you know, possible finish it could have. So. And we um, shipped gold with the album then um, when we went platinum we were just ecstatic about it. and pushed out um, Eminem's 8 Mile soundtrack, uh, Nirvana's greatest hits. Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. And for us, like, they're, you know, artists that we listen to and, and look up to. And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the class. The video for Nil By Mouth was, um, was something for us. We wanted to put that whole, um, our whole live act and the energy into the video clip. And, just show how energetic we are when we're performing, how true we are to our music. Get up in your face with the sickness of quickness. Die and laugh, die and jack when we be up top, kissing all night. To make you feel right, so I say we're through. It doesn't forget to you. Oh, please don't make me lie. I guess the 
lyrics in general are talking of a situation, being stuck in a situation that you can't find a way out of. And it's like the breaking free from that. The way you all seem to be aware of each other on stage and the way you move around each other. We shot stuff at like super slow-mo and it was kind of weird the way real full-on performance turned into like almost like a ballet. The song Suit uh, means so us is this, portraying who we are and um, what we're about. So us is this, we're not trying to be anyone, this is us, accept it. This is where it's from and where it's at. I know that you can't lie, but when I'm raised like that, you reserve the right to keep it to yourself. And I would too if I respect you. This is us and us is this. Better swing and pray. We've done gigs in our time very similar to that video. Um, and we weren't fortunate enough then to have cages. Damien hanging over the top of the, uh, the top of the fence, spitting blood all over us, or um, maybe 200 of your mates throwing beer and uh, bottles at us. Try to break the cage as much as we could. We just went wild. We just, you know, it's like an underground fight scene. Lit Up was a, um, a live performance video. The clips actually had two, two shows that we played. One of them was at Town Hall. It was our first sellout show and the song is basically about loss of all control, it's basically just losing it and just going absolutely ballistic and that's what our live shows are. is a song that's written for pretty much all us guys in the band who have lost a close family member and um, the video kind of represents like that more natural chilled out side of blind spot. Extreme behind the scenes, <laughs> blind spot video making. Whoa, man, it's a music video. Camera. Go back to the 16 mil, Alex. Oh, we're on 25 now. <laughs> <laughs> Of every day as if it was your last and 
every other clip we've done, we've been in uniform, we're all dressed the same. And that clip, we're just in Muffy, we're just ourselves, and we just relax, sitting back at our flat, hanging out, doing what we do. The suit on a Sunday afternoon, I guess. I don't know, the album's a journey for me. The first track, it doesn't hit you straight away, it's not bang in your face, it, it rolls into when it sets an ambience and then the uh, strings to all of us. It's really an emotional instrument and it starts with really powerful orchestral strings and it, it has a female harmony over the top of it and it sets the whole emotion for the album and then it will come in with some powerful guitars and some good riffs and we have a, um, a nice speech at the end that Marcus did that um, means a lot. Oh, I wrote a speech out in English. I had a friend of mine uh, translate it into Māori. Just a thank you to everyone um, who's gone out there and bought the album, who's listened to it and appreciated it. Uh, the album to me um, is everything. Like, it's basically, it's almost a time capsule of the last, you know, few years of my life. It gives me a real sense of accomplishment and achievement. We've got a portrait of ourselves here now that we can present to someone and show them. But um, the thing that stands out to me the most in the album is probably the track Flex, having my old man in there, but my father in there for the rest of our lives. For me, recording the album, it was um, a big achievement. It was something I'd always always dreamed of. My, my uncle was a musician as well. He's quite a well-achieved musician in New Zealand, so kind of following in his footsteps. Uh, Alright, well, we'll just shoot it. Here we are at the photo shoot, uh, as you can see. Blind Spot's quite a goal oriented band. I think we um, set sights, and um, once we reach that level, we're always looking for something higher. Performing live is probably the biggest thing for us. We really pride ourselves on our, on our live energy and. Um, we're really capturing it and harnessing it and just you know giving it giving it our all. Yeah. I'm going to see what uh, what the response is like, I suppose, what the crowds like in Southeast Asia and Australia. Yeah, it's something we're really interested in, looking forward to. Yeah, we're going out there to rip our country as well. Yeah.